Once a photoreceptor absorbs a sufficient number of photons, it becomes stimulated and increases its electrical firing rate. These neural signals then propagate to the post-receptoral neurons, that is the horizontal, the bipolar, the amacrine and the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells represent the final stage of retinal processing. If ganglion cells don't respond, the response to a given image will not actually make it out of the eye. In this sense, we can think of the ganglion cells as retinal gatekeepers. Now, some ganglion cells receive input from a large number of photoreceptors. This is common in the visual periphery. Other ganglion cells receive input from a single or just a few photoreceptors, and this is far more common in the fovea. This difference in the amount of neural convergence has functional implications. When many photoreceptors converge onto a single ganglion cell, such as in the periphery, this ganglion cell may be more likely to respond than a ganglion cell which receives input from just one photoreceptor. This produces an increase in sensitivity. This increase in sensitivity comes at a cost, however. When the amount of convergence is high, the ganglion cell can't distinguish which of its many photoreceptor inputs have been stimulated. Consequently, information and resolution is lost. On the other hand, when the amount of convergence is lower, yes, the ganglion cell will be less sensitive, but resolution is greater. Now, ganglion cells don't just receive excitatory photoreceptor inputs, as we've described it so far. In fact, they respond to specific patterns of light, specific spatial patterns of light. On the right, we have a wiring diagram. Those small circles at the top, each labelled R, represent photoreceptors. The receptors located in the central region, that is that central disc at the top, labelled the on area, feed into a, into a bipolar cell. The receptors located on the outer ring, labelled the off area, feed into horizontal cells. Now, if this bipolar cell is stimulated, it will drive the ganglion cell below it. Importantly, however, the horizontal cells send inhibitory input to the bipolar cell. If inhibited, the bipolar cell will not fire, and nor will the ganglion cell. To make this bipolar cell fire, it must receive greater excitatory input from the receptors in the on area than in its off area. If the receptors in the off area are stimulated, this will inhibit the bipolar cell. In other words, to elicit a response from this ganglion cell, more light has to fall into the on area that is the central region above, than in its surrounding or off area. This is known as lateral antagonism. The brain is optimised to extract differences which exist in space and in time. In the movie we're about to see, we'll observe the mapping of a ganglion cell receptive field. The sounds you'll hear represent the electrical discharges or the firing rate of the cell.